This week on InPost, a sunset overlooking the Pacific Ocean in Del Mar, California. Hi everybody, my name is Scott Davenport. Welcome back to In Post. And this week we're processing a sunset shot from Del Mar, California. You may have seen the In the Field episodes and get the uh, behind the scenes look while I was out on location doing the shot. And um, today it's back in the studio, get this into the machine and um, you know, fine tune it and bring out some of those colors and some of the things that uh, I know that I felt when I was on scene. So let's get over to the computer and begin. So this is the image straight out of the camera, and I've already done some adjustments. I see I'm in the before view here. Let me press the backslash key and go to after. So you can see I've opened up a lot of things, added a little color. Let me walk you through these changes here. Very first was lens correction, so that's just a simple one-click option to get some of the bowing gone. And you can see also in the edges there's some devignetting. That's nice because it evens out the sky some. Everything else I did was in the basic panel. And so um, started with white balance. Here's how it was. Let's tell you what. Let's um, let's copy all these settings so I don't lose everything. Copy, check all, copy, and I'll paste it on later. And we'll like reapproximate this as we go through. Let me zero out everything here. Just double click on all these sliders. So this is kind of how the image looked like out of the camera. The first thing I wanted to do was warm up the temperature some, and just a touch, maybe somewhere around like that. And exposure-wise, we look pretty good. There's a bit of clipping. If I press the, you know, I highlight over here, hover over the um, this little arrow here, we can see the clipping where the sun is, and that's natural. That's that's going to happen. And then you can see there's a very tiny bit of clipping in the uh, in the very deep shadows, and I'm okay with that. I like some pure black in my photo. But let's go ahead and check the black point anyway. I'm going to hold down the Option key clicking the slider, and yeah, it's just that lower right corner where there's a little bit of pure black. We'll just leave it right around there, that's fine. But next is to deal with highlights and shadows. This area of the sky is quite bright, and it looks almost like dull, like, you know, like grayish tone. Uh, so I'm going to bring the highlights you know, way down. I'm just going to experiment here with the slider. You know, something, something around there, maybe. The sun's still going to be blown out, and that's okay. And then the shadows, we're going to bring those, you know, up quite a bit. So we're going to see the greens start to come through more. And play a little bit with clarity and with, you know, vibrance to get things going there. And uh, again, these were just experimentations until I got something that I liked. Now let me paste back the settings I had. Paste those, see how close I was. Eh, not too bad on the highlights. The shadows I brought up a lot more. And then as a result... Obviously, I went back and played around with the black points again, so I'm avoiding, actually, let's see, J, I actually did rein in that, uh, that clipping on the sunshine pretty well between the highlight slider and uh, adjusting the black point. So, yeah, that's basically it here. Now, the other big thing that needs to happen is this whole mess over in the lower left corner has got to go away. I am not going to try and do that with the spot removal tool. Lightroom, um, it, sorry, I'm just not as uh, happy with the results I get in Lightroom. I prefer to do this type of retouching in the photo suite, so that's where we're going to go right now. So in the photo suite, I'm going to spend uh, the first half of my time here in layers to clean up this uh, very distracting element in the lower left corner. If you saw the In the Field episode, you'll know uh, I talked about this quite a bit. Try to avoid getting these things in your photos in the first place. I'm going to zoom in at 100%, and this is going to take some time to get through. There's, uh, there's no getting around it. This is going to be a painstaking job. I'm going to show you a couple of things that aren't going to work, and I'll show you a little bit of what will work, and then just trust me, the rest of it just takes time. Now, first is the perfect eraser, and uh, I'll do this spot here, for example. It's going to get confused and go, oh, everything's great, because you're trying to connect this big line. That's not going to work. And if you try to remove something too big, like this guy here, the eraser is fine for removing things of this size, but it depends um, what you have behind it, and this looks kind of messy. You know, you've lost the texture of the water, so that's no good. Uh, similar with the retouch tool, this is really just to you know, smooth things, and it's going to smear. And that looks 
actually not bad, but not great. It's a little dingy because the blacks of this silhouetted, um, you know, uh, cross beam got involved there. So that leaves us the clone tool. And that's exactly what I have to use to work my way through all this. And it's just going to take time. So the way the clone tool works is I option click, select something, and I get this nice little swatch you can see moving around. And so I'm going to option click close to the bar here, bring down just a little bit, paint across, and just take away that piece. And I'll do another one, option click, and paint away this piece. And I'm going to slowly have to work my way through the photo. When you get to areas like this where you've got some uh, shine on the water, you know, option click here and kind of bring in some from over here, maybe just connect it. That doesn't look too bad. Option click on this side, kind of tie that together, and so on and so forth. Working my way all the way through all of these pieces and then down into, you know, the bottom area where you've got the dirt and the dust and the little shrubs and so forth. When you do all of that, what you end up with is this. And so you can see, here's the layer I've done all this work on. I've just turned it on, and that is, you know, magically gone. It's pretty good. Uh, very close examination of this area. It's pretty good. There is some messy stuff here, and I, I honestly, I got a little bit uh, tired and fatigued. I really want to go back and clean this up more, uh, but that's something I will do for another video. With that done, last thing to do is some stylization. So we're going to fire up effects, and I'll show you the, the few things that I applied to this photo to finish it off. So in effects, I've done a variety of things here. Uh, first is dynamic contrast, where I start quite often. I began with the natural preset and just inched up the small slider a little bit. That's mainly for these little needles on the pine tree. The one other thing I did is in the blending options, I brought this highlight slider way up. Let me bring this all the way back down. You can see I was getting, um, for me, too much detail in these highlights. These, you know, these whiter, these white clouds here, these little wisps. I want those to be a little softer. So um, I had that up. I think it was at 49 before I left it. Well, I'll leave it at 50 for now. That's fine. Moving on to color. So the first color enhancer, you can see it's warming things up. And I've also increased the blues. I believe I began with a sky enhancer preset which does a fair amount of the uh, adjustments in the blues. And then I brought the warm up. So let me undo that again. Click that back on, get my warmth back up there. There we go. So you can see the aqua channel is high and uh, more saturated and the blue is much more saturated. And I also played around with the brightness on the blue just a little bit to bring down these to make these darker. Another color enhancer, this time focusing on the orange range. So you see oranges here have been amped up and yellows I don't think I touched a little bit. I brought the yellows toward the orange as well and that was mainly for these accents in these clouds. But you notice the mask here. There's this grayish dot. If I do control M to show the mask. I just did a, a single click with uh, the masking brush at about you know 40 to 50 percent opacity to cut down the effect on this burst of orange here. It was just too hot, too much orange in this area. More color, another color enhancer filter, this time for the greens. And this brought up the greens of the, uh, the trees in this foreground. Straight green enhancer. You can also see the mask here. Again, I wanted to make sure I wasn't enhancing any of the green tones that were in the sky or being reflected around. So again, control M to see the mask. Everything's removed from the sky, and it's just for these needles and this foreground that's getting all of the green. A tone enhancer, it's the next filter. I did a slight tug on the whites just to rein back in these highlights a little bit. They were getting a little bit too white hot. But again, this is going to be blown out. This is going to be you know, no detail there. That's where the, you know, the sun is. The other touch was an increase on the blue tone curve for the mid-tones just to give mainly this area a little more of a blue tone, and it had an extra effect on this guy as well. So you can see before and after. Just gives that sky a little bit more blueness. And last but not least, a vignette, just to bring the eyes back in. This one is a, a little off-center, using the, the crosshairs, kind of setting center around here. So 
the, the, the sunburst is really where our eyes are being drawn. And by having this edge a little shaded, we're not looking there as much. It's helping reinforce that all roads lead to the sun going, you know, being set. They got the diagonal line here. You've got these branches pointing that way. These clouds are shaping this focal point. So all that put together, this was coming out of Lightroom, and that's the final product. The biggest challenge with this shot was the retouching, getting that beetle trap out of the frame. And uh, it, it was painstaking. Uh, I, I'm not 100% satisfied with how it came out, and I may still tinker with it and uh, try some other, um, other software that uh, has uh, content-aware fills and retouching tools. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the shot otherwise. I really like how the, the tree plays with, uh, with the clouds. The color combinations are nice, uh, but it's that, um, that retouching that really became the, the problem. So the tip of the week is if you're able to avoid having a distraction in your frame while you're shooting, do that because it will save you lots of time in post-processing. In this case, I could not get the composition that I wanted without that uh, distracting element in that lower left corner. Just where the sun was going down, I wanted that in the frame, and uh, there was only so much land around the tree that I was shooting. So my choices were limited, and uh, I did my best to push it off to the side, but it still cost me quite a bit of time in post-processing. So if you can compose something that doesn't have the distraction in it in the first place, that's your best bet. That's all for this week in post. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you've picked up a technique or two that you can use on your photos. And please share your photos. Get your work out of your computer and into the world and show it to people. I'm certainly interested to see it. If you'd like any opinions or feedback, by all means, ask. That would be totally fine. And uh, otherwise, just let me know uh, what else you'd like to hear about. If there's a post-processing problem that you have or you're not sure how to approach, a certain situation or a certain image, let me know. That'd be great to get this to be a, a two-way conversation, much more of a relationship than me in an empty studio talking to a camera. <laughs> so hit me up. You can contact me through my website. That's got the links to all my social media sites. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon.